Hello, my name is um, Dr. Brian A. Ferentz. I am the principal investigator of a hotline a late breaking clinical trial to ESC 2017 that is a naturally randomized trial that uses genetic instruments to evaluate the causal effect of CEDP and HMG co-reductase on the risk of cardiovascular disease. By way of background, um, numerous previous Mendelian randomization studies have consistently demonstrated that LDL cholesterol is causally associated with the risk of cardiovascular disease. And numerous randomized trials have demonstrated that reducing LDL cholesterol reduces the risk of cardiovascular events by approximately 20% per millimole per liter reduction in LDL cholesterol, largely independent of how LDL cholesterol is reduced. The notable exception to that um, observation is the CTP inhibitors. In the Accelerate trial, treatment with evacetropib reduced LDL cholesterol by three quarters of a millimole but had absolutely no effect on the risk of cardiovascular events. And the results of that trial have raised uncertainty about the causal effect of LDL cholesterol on the risk of cardiovascular disease and raises the possibility that the clinical benefit of lowering LDL cholesterol may depend on how it's lowered. So to address that issue, we, can, we um, sought specifically to determine whether lower LDL due to genetic variants that mimic the effect of CETP inhibitors have the same effect on the risk of cardiovascular disease as genetic variants that mimic the effect of statins, azetamide, and PCSK9 inhibitors in order to make inferences about whether or not the mechanism by which we lower LDL influences the potential clinical benefit. The study included a total of 368,000 people and who experienced 76,000 cardiovascular events. The primary outcome was major vascular events defined as the composite of the first occurrence of uh, non-fatal MI, stroke, coronary revascularization, or um, coronary heart disease death. In the overall population, we found that as compared to the reference group, persons who had higher CTP scores were, um, um, had lower CTP activity, activity and a corresponding higher HDL cholesterol, lower LDL cholesterol, concordantly lower ApoB, and a risk of cardiovascular disease that was proportional to the risk of cardiovascular events. The effects were indeed dose dependent. However, in comparative effectiveness analyses, the effect of each unit lower LDL cholesterol on the risk of cardiovascular disease due to genetic variants that mimic the effect of CETP inhibitors had exactly the same effect on the risk of cardiovascular disease as variants that mimic the effect of statins, azetamide, and PCSK9 inhibitors, implying that the causal effect of CETP inhibition on the risk of cardiovascular disease is due to changes in LDL rather than HDL. However, when we evaluated the combined effect of CETP and HMG co-reductase inhibition, because all of the cardiovascular outcomes trials have evaluated the effect of CETP inhibitors on the background of statin therapy, we found that the combined exposure to variants that mimic the effect of stat, uh, CTP inhibitors and statins resulted in discordant changes in LDL cholesterol and ApoB and a corresponding risk of cardiovascular disease that was proportional to the attenuated change in ApoB but significantly less than expected per unit change in LDL cholesterol. And in fact, we externally validated those results by finding a, a 21 variant natu uh, genetic variants that have naturally occurring discordance between LDL cholesterol and ApoB is similar in magnitude to the discordance that occurs when CETP inhibition is added to HMG co-reductase inhibition. And that score also associated with the risk of cardiovascular disease proportional to the absolute change in ApoB, but significantly less than the effect per unit change in LDL cholesterol with a p-value of 2.9 times 10 to the minus 8. So we conclude from these data that the causal effect of LDL on cardiovascular disease is actually determined by the circulating concentration of LDL particles as estimated by ApoB, rather than by the variable mass of cholesterol carried by those particles, which is what we estimate as LDL cholesterol. And therefore, the clinical benefit of lowering LDL cholesterol is determined by the corresponding absolute reduction in LDL, which means that the clinical benefit of lowering LDL cholesterol does depend on how it's lowered. Therapies that reduce LDL cholesterol by reducing LDL particles should reduce the risk of cardiovascular events proportional to the absolute change in LDL cholesterol. However, therapies that reduce LDL cholesterol by altering the lipid content of those particles uh, without proportionally reducing the LDL particles, such as adding a CEDP inhibitor to a statin, should reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease proportional to the absolute change in ApoB, which is likely to be less than the corresponding expected effect per unit lower LDL. And these results really explain how evacetropib can robustly lower LDL cholesterol in the ACCELERATE trial without reducing events. And it explicitly anticipates that treatment with antacetropib in the REVEAL trial should reduce the risk of cardiovascular events proportional to the absolute change in ApoB, which is likely to be less than the expected benefit per unit change in LDL cholesterol.
depending on the discordance, that, the magnitude of the discordance between LDL cholesterol and ApoB that occurs when anisotropib is added to a statin.